Hi everyone, welcome to Sectoral Events Webinar Platform. Today, 3rd of September 2020. So, um, today we have great guest speakers uh, from everywhere, from Italy, from Turkey, from uh, UK. And I, I'm glad that they accept my invitation to join and inspire us tonight. So as you may know, if you read the description for the event on the website, when you register, uh, we have a networking platform, which called UBWN, United Business Women Network uh, Group on Facebook. And I recently set up the Instagram page as well. So it's um, established a last um, International Women Days, 8th of March, 2020. And we had the first event it was an actual event just before the lockdown. Um, some of other my guest speakers made the presentation. You can find out on the uh, Facebook page. Um, today is the second one. We name it the woman in life. Uh, what does it mean? It means the woman actually everywhere in the world. So if even the men says uh, we are on the second place, now we are getting stronger day by day. And if even the, in 2020, we can see in some of the countries in the world that they are pushing back the woman in second place and uh, you know, put down, it is, it is ridiculous. So we are more stronger, more professional and uh, uh, more successful in the life. And we are uh, purely acutely um, at the same place as men in the professional life and everywhere also. We are more than it because we are mom. We have to be responsible from our kids. Um, as I mentioned, UBWN, United Business Network, um, Business Woman Network uh, Group, it's increasing day by day. If you invite your friends to join our platform, it will be great. And next uh, webinar will be International Women's Day in March. If you would like to join as a speaker, uh, please more than welcome to uh, send the inquiry on info at sectoralevents.com. Uh, I will consider and uh, connect with you to the invite. Also, if you suggest any uh, speaker that you think that they are great to inspire us in that platform, also please suggest and I will contact them to invite. Today, um, as I said, we have guest speakers, eight different professional fields. And as you see on the promo video, their name and their field. So we will start with uh, Sione. Um, she is a uh, scientist and artist. Uh, hi, Sione. Are you here? Hi, Arzu. Yes, I am. That's I can hear. great. So, uh, Please let us know a little bit about you and you can start your screen share. Thanks for joining. Right. Thank you so much, Arzu. I'm going to share my screen. Um, just confirm if you all can see uh, the, this presentation that I'm sharing. I've got a few slides to share. Let me know if you can, can see, see it. it. Okay, brilliant. And thank you so much uh, for uh, the introduction. It was really kind. And I'm really glad to be a part of the United Business Women Network. It feels to be a, a set of really strong and inspiring group of people. And I guess we, I'm sure that we will all learn a lot from each other's experiences and uh, really glad to be given this opportunity where I can share a few experiences from my life and my journey. And if that can contribute to anyone's perspective, that would be really um, a wonderful thing to do. So um, a little bit about me. So I have, uh, uh, so I was born in India and uh, brought up in Mumbai. I uh, did my training in chemical engineering, which is again, a extremely male dominated uh, industry. Yeah, so I uh, am a chemical engineer, as I said, and uh, it is a male dominated industry where uh, there are very few women professional. And at every point as a woman, you will have to prove yourself. But I was very blessed that I was 
uh, I got the opportunity at the very beginning of my career to start as a researcher in the field of science, where I started creating and uh, ideating uh, therapeutic skincare products, uh, contributing to consumers who had problems and issues that were a global market, working <laughs> with brands like Unilever and Colgate, Palmolive, and right now in UK, I work at GSK. So all through my life, developing skincare products, I think one thing that I have realized has really helped me is my background as an artist. So I am a, a passionate art lover, and I think my, my, my interest towards my art and my love for uh, creativity has always uh, been a fodder to my creative uh, self and trying to get something novel and new and uh, a better solution to the consumers, to problems. Uh, so that is where I really wanted to focus today and tell people how my journey and my uh, experience in art as well as science has been so uh, cohesive with each other and have contributed in conjunction and it continues to be so and I feel I do not feel I can be uh, not an artist but only a scientist or I can just be a scientist and not an artist I just cannot believe that uh, and that's where I really wanted to take everyone so uh, as I already mentioned that you know I grew up in India and uh, I worked for global brands in multi-continents multi-culture in Asia and in Europe and uh, my passion for art has definitely induced a lot to my creative thinking. And I also being a STEM ambassador, so STEM for many of you who would want to know is the science, technology, engineering, and mathematics um, genre of studies, which has been propagated because that is the contributor, the major contributor to the economy of a country because that creates the industrial job. But there is a lot of studies that has gone behind art being also a very important entity which can contribute towards, in fact, which will be the, the, the thing in future to contribute towards the growth of the economy and how we as women can you know, contribute our share. Uh, 2017 was the year when I moved to UK and it wasn't really a, a, a very easy experience for me because I had a very steady career in India. But when I moved to UK, I uh, absolutely came here with a blank page. I came here because my husband had an opportunity and obviously I couldn't be away from him. So as a woman, you know, we are very, very empathetic, compassionate, and sometimes we have to, you know, sacrifice uh, a lot of our careers and, you know, just um, because we want to be with our partner and, you know, we want to do that because we are kind of, that's in our DNA, I would say, but then that, that doesn't make us weak. I think that makes us stronger. And also, I did think there was an opportunity here to work in a different culture, to imbibe a different atmosphere, a set of people. So it definitely was an important uh, adventure for me. So when I came down to UK, there was a big span of time when I was like looking for the best opportunity for myself. But I was also uh, trying to, uh, you know, see how, how, how I can be more creative in the space of art, how can I contribute myself towards the, uh, you know, uh, by doing few exhibitions around uh, UK. And in UK, you know, art has been also valued so greatly. So I did a few exhibitions over here. And uh, while I was doing it uh, in, in, say, I was blessed again to get the opportunity at JSK where I started working as a research scientist again and I continued my career path but so to speak I guess the art has always been a continuous creative fodder for me and therefore it it never made me feel that I was sitting stagnant or I was not doing anything also it kind of gave me a very positive approach towards life so you know uh, it kind of helped me not feeling that I'm just sitting at home doing nothing. And also it 
always kept me thinking of doing something new. So that, that's where I just wanted to be. Uh, just want to tell all of you that, you know, there is no much, not much difference between science and art because science also is something that discovers the unknown. It just, in, you know, triggers the curiosity inside us, in, you know, in our head. And it creates a vision, you know, it helps us communicate, it helps us express our ideas, and it helps us create a solution by, you know, promoting out of the box thinking. And that's why, you know, you kind of promote innovation. So innovation can not only be through science, but also through art. And it almost looks like it's the two uh, hemispheres of the brain, the left and the right, is a myth that, you know, uh, there is this left side of the brain, which is more analytical, more logical, and the right side of the brain, which is uh, more creative and intuitive and imaginative. However, you cannot do without the right side because, you know, uh, so to speak, if you are speaking a language, if A, B, C, D, uh, English is what your left brain is getting trained to, your right brain is helping you express yourself. And the emotions that come from, you know, uh, from the language, the expressions, the colors, that is what makes us a human being. And it is therefore very important to have both in our life an equal content and break even with science and art. And therefore there has been so much of, you know, studies and uh, it, 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 I'm just giving you some data uh, because art has been a huge driver in my life and my career. When I create new products, I am always not, uh, I'm always thinking of creating something new. I don't want to do something which others have done. And I want to give a different, a more exciting and a better solution to the consumers by understanding their problems. And that is something, you know, uh, which has come from my creativity. So art can be any form. It can be, uh, it can be, uh, you know, music, it can be performing art like dance, or it can be just a visual art like uh, painting. So there has been a lot of studies which has been conducted by Galileo Einstein, uh, sorry, uh, 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 the, you know, by Robert Boot uh, Bernstein and many others in John Hopkins um, Institute, uh, which have uh, testified that scientists who were like from Pasteur to Einstein, they have all been art lovers and artists themselves in some form. So for example, Einstein was a violin, uh, student of violin, and he used to play the violin instrument, and Galileo was a poet. And Samuel Morse, you know, as we all know, had invented the Morse chord, was a portrait painter. So definitely they had an inclination and curiosity to think something differently and do something different. And out of the box thinking was there, which created that innovation. And this factor is what is the art factor, which is about STEAM instead of STEM. So you, so to speak, you want science, technology, art, and mathematics instead of the science, technology, and mathematics. And as I have said, my art, during the time when I was not finding a job, it made me focus, it made me concentrate. My art is something, you know, which makes me as a creative person visualize, help me vividly think things differently, express, be objective, be detail-oriented. And it gives me a, a openness to, you know, ideas, which might be just bizarre, absurd. Like who would have thought about, uh, you know, something like Morse code for when Samuel Morse, I mean, I'm not saying that I have done something uh, as crazy, but what I'm trying to say is, it is some, art is something that we all should pursue because it just gives us a lot of positive energy to take forward in life. And it kind of also gives you a very different perspective. And, uh, with the COVID uh, scenario, I think, uh, you know, the, the world has got triggered uh, almost, you know, the economy, uh, you know, the economy is being such heavily impacted. Uh, and uh, there is already, there was a drive for automation, artificial intelligence, big data, machine learning. These were always the buzzwords of the 20th century or 21st century where 
there all, already was like a war between humans versus machines. And going forward, if we are just mathematical and analytical and logical, it's something that even machines can do. How else do you bring you know, the best in you? And I guess being women, we have intuition, imagination, and creativity in our DNA. And what also we have in our DNA, as Arzu spoke a while ago, is that we women, we play different roles in our life. We are, so I kind of categorize the roles of women in three forms. We are, you are a warrior, you are a, a mother, and you are a queen. So a war, as a warrior, you, you are a go-getter. You are, you, you are fighting to achieve something. As a mother, you are a compassionate person. You are a Say you are a team leader, you are listening to people, you are nurturing them, you are, uh, you know, developing them for their growth. And then you are the queen as well. So you're getting your tasks done, you're getting your work done by others. So basically, even at home, you do all of these three roles. Naturally, no one teaches a woman to do these things. And that's in our DNA. So the most important thing which is going to be in the future is the human side of it. If there is anything that a machine can do, the job's going to be obsolete. It's, it's the innovation, it's the space of creativity where we should be focusing. Anything which is more human and humans can do is what is most important. And I really feel from my experience, I really want to emphasize if I cannot anymore, or any less than what I'm already trying to, is that um, science and art and all round, uh, you know, engagement uh, in, in our career is very important. We should practice some form of art. It doesn't need to be, uh, you know, visual. It can be anything. It can be dance because everything is so technical. Art needs a lot of technical understanding. A ballet dancer cannot do the dance without understanding the technicality of the posture. And therefore, a musician cannot sing un un unless they understand the technicality of the octaves. So therefore, you know, all together, I guess art is a humongous driver for science and innovation and transformation, therefore. So this is a few of my examples of my art. And yeah, that, that's all that I had to say. Thanks, Arzu. They are great, Sayoni. <laughs> Thank you so much. So also, uh, Absolutely. I have a question for you. Uh, how people can motivate themselves to doing more art if they think they have skill or they can um, increase their skill in art? Yeah, so Arlo, thank you for that question. You know, many people ask me that. And I will say that there are two different things. One is being skillful. And the other thing is to be an artist. So, you know, you can just think of anything, the colors which you like, and just take a blank canvas and try to just play with those colors, you know, create something new which you would really like. So that could be a way of expressing yourself. Now, when you come to skill, skill is something that can be learned. You can take trainings from other people. You know, you need but the most important thing about art is patience. And it's just not visual art for any form of art, uh, music, dance, you need patience. You need that uh, form of very detailing, detail oriented, but it's more important to feel the energy. So it's more important to be creative because you, know, you look at Picasso, I mean, uh, or you look at any other uh, painter's uh, work, for example, Van Gogh, there are so many different types of paintings like surrealism, imp uh, you know, um, impressionism. So all of these different forms of art, it does not have to be realism. It doesn't have to be a perfect face. It doesn't have to be a per perfect posture, but in general, it can be your own imagination. And that's what art teaches you. So just be imaginative. Yeah, that's great. Thank you, Sayani. So next great speaker, Pina Russo from Italy. Uh, she's an architect. Hi, yes. Pina. Hi. Hi to everyone. Good evening. <laughs> you Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, you can take the screen to uh, tell us yes. more about you. 
Thank you. Yeah. So I am Pina Russo and I was born in Naples and grown there in a little town near Naples. And I start with my um, uh, place of, of birth because uh, I think that uh, this place was really important in my growing and my choice, uh, choosing uh, my job, my teacher's job, that is my job now, because I always uh, have dreamed about the art of my city with a UNESCO uh, recognized place uh, for art and uh, uh, history. So my life when I was a child was uh, just between the theater and the architecture. I studied dance for many years. I had a diploma, <laughs> just like a, a dancer at ballet. But of course, I, I am not a dancer, I am an architect. Uh, by the way, this is very important for um, uh, my career because uh, at one point uh, during my study, uh, it appeared the dance um, again. Uh, I thought it was just, you know, um, a kind of a sport for children. Then uh, during my study uh, in architecture, uh, the dance came uh, to me again. Uh, in which way? Because usually when you think about the architecture, you uh, think about the art stars, so you think about the uh, building, uh, industries, and um, uh, all the new technologies. Uh, but architecture is something else, it's something uh, else as well. Uh, it's something about uh, uh, the body of the man and his mind. So it starts uh, uh, in the heart of the man. That's what they <laughs> touch me. Uh, uh, every day at uni with the pupils and um, and my teachers, the, the senior teachers, uh, professors uh, at uni where um, I work too. Um, so um, I started working um, in uh, in little theater and during the high school scientific school. But then after the, the college, I choose uh, for my degree to go to university and I choose architecture because I was so interested in art and history. So I thought that this uh, kind of um, a study was uh, suitable for me for this reason, because it was not just, just like engineering, uh, but it was more open to many choice because I, I was not properly sure about uh, what to do, what to be in the future. I, I knew very well what I liked. I liked the, the, the dance, I liked the ballet, I liked the, the art, the architecture. I liked the, to look at the city and imagine in my mind to have a better city, uh, to make improvement in the life of people I live with uh, uh, and um, for other people. So I was really like, because in the first year of uh, my course, I met a, a very famous architect uh, that is called, it was called, uh, he was called um, Fabrizio Carola, mm, unlikely he passed away, but uh, he was really important because he had this specific uh, um, uh, project uh, that involved himself in Africa. So he uh, tried to um, uh, use the, the, the new technology uh, combined with the old system. So my first, in my first year, I was uh, very lucky to uh, be involved in one of his uh, projects. Uh, he made this kind of, a, what uh, that is called cupole, uh, a kind of dome, uh, that is very popular in Mauritania. And he made this uh, project in our university. So we students were um, able to build uh, by ourselves uh, one of these cupole. Of course, uh, this gives us a, a new perception about architecture. Um, so what it means uh, to build not big architecture, not be the, a big building, uh, new um, uh, sh shining, but something real, something real, something uh, useful for uh, the most people and the, the poorest ones, uh, because they were really cheap, but they were so, so impressive in, uh, in the aesthetic but and especially in, uh, in sustainability. So uh, I was really involved in this, uh, in this architecture and the passion for architecture growing me. Uh, at the same time, I um, went on with uh, art. 
So in the university, I was able to find the tomb, that is the University Theatre Mobile, uh, where I um, was involved in uh, creating a project, uh, creating set designing, and we had a lot of shows uh, during the um, uh, during the years. Uh, I was lucky, I, I told you, I was lucky, very lucky. Uh, and maybe even a little bit um, uh, brave, because I just asked uh, to, uh, to the professor to be involved in this project. Sometimes I, I think that our, um, we as women, uh, sometimes we fear to ask for, our, for what we can do. So um, we just stay uh, quiet because we are afraid uh, to have a no. Uh, so I am, I'm proud. I'm proud of me uh, because usually I stay a lot of quiet. But in some circumstances, I was brave to, to ask to be part in this project. And this was very uh, fortunate for me because it, it allowed me to realize my dream at the end. Um, so uh, I started with creating this set designing uh, and at the same time creating a real architecture. So I was able to uh, have both the passion of my life together and to go through this, this passion. Uh, when I, um, I had to choose for the, for the degree, I chose the uh, scenography. That is not uh, maybe a word very well known in the UK or in America. Uh, this is a, a word that we use in, uh, in Italy uh, to, uh, to uh, appoint the set design, costume design, and production design all together. I know that uh, in, other, um, in other countries, and especially the Anglo-Saxon country, uh, there are um, more specific rules, but um, uh, in Italy it's, it's a, a little bit different. And this was one of my problems when I moved in London because I had this kind of a, um, open, um, open culture, open mind, and then I had to uh, specialize in one thing because of course everyone just uh, asked me which kind of architecture uh, I was. And my answer was just, I am an architect because uh, my study, um, cover uh, different subjects. Uh, during the, the thesis, so uh, I choose uh, an opera, uh, and uh, I start with uh, my research. Uh, and um, my professor just sustained me, and this was a, a really good point because I I, I felt myself myself free uh, to do whatever I wanted to experiment to experiment new, new things, especially on the set design, because usually uh, the set design is very, uh, is very old style, let's say. There is a painting on the backstage, and then there are some proofs. Um, but I want to do something different, uh, and I want to join the architecture and the, um, the experience in, in the architecture, and to put all, the, all my knowledge in the set design as well on the stage. So I chose this uh, opera that is called Le Conde of Man uh, by Offenbach. Um, of course, I, will, I won't show you everything because it will be boring. I show just something just to uh, let, you, um, let you see how I work. Uh, and I um, was able to work in this way. Uh, the, main, um, the main object is to have the body uh, and the movement, and as the body of the actor and of the singer moves on the stage, uh, the, uh, the design, the set, must move as well. So uh, there must be a set moving itself, a machine who can open and close just like the, the body of the man. This is the main uh, line of the research, the ones that may, then make me able to have PhD as well. Um, as you see, there is this kind of a, a close house, is house of uh, Olympia, and then during the, the show, uh, the, the set is moving, there are men who can move it, or the actors can move as, uh, from they, by themselves, and so it can move and it can show different uh, uh, form, that is a real form, not only by lights. Um, these are the projects, and as you see, the there are the plants, so it's a properly project. It's not just like a sketch as it usually is in set design. There are uh, the pictures of my uh, dissertation with the models that we uh, made. And this dissertation uh, gave me a prize. This was one of my achievements. I was really uh, moved by um, 
by the price I saved because I didn't expect this. Uh, it was an experimental thesis, so it was a, a, a kind of a risk uh, because some, in, you know, when you do something different out of the, the usual, uh, it's always a risk. And uh, I felt just like uh, I wanted to do what, what I wanted. So I wanted uh, to risk and that was a good thing. Uh, it Tina, was, uh, yes. Continue, sorry. Congratulations, yeah. you got this lovely prize. So uh, did you have any uh, men competitive in this um, competition? Uh, yes, there, there were men comp uh, competitor, but uh, by the way, this prize was um, gave, uh, let's say to the, uh, it was not about a competition between men or women. It, it was just because of the uh, the best uh, uh, project in my city. So I, I think I was the only one in the city at that moment. That's why. But uh, it, there were in the other city as well. So it was a nice prize for me. It, it, the competition, I found the competition not at the uni, but I found the, the competition in the work uh, later. Uh, I had a competition with men and I didn't like this because usually I like to have a, um, uh, a, work a working environment peaceful. I like to uh, share the experience with uh, men and women. I don't want to make difference between the sex, but I see that in my, especially in the architecture, not, not in, uh, in the theater. In the theater, it's, uh, if I can suggest to someone, if I can give my experience, is that in the theater, um, people are more, uh, um, equal they don't see you like a female or like a male uh, this has not happened in uh, in architecture maybe because the construction uh, is more a male uh, environment so yes uh, i was uh, bullied by men uh, in uh, when i worked for a construction company and it was not not nice as, uh, because at the beginning you know you are just uh, um, amazed or you think oh it's not possible it's not because I'm not a, a woman they are just maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong maybe I, I, I'm doing something wrong then after you realize that it's not because you are not doing something good or something wrong it's just they are trying to sabotage you and this is not nice uh, by the way you must believe in yourself and go on and that's what I always try to do it's, it's not a of course, it's not simple uh, always, but I think that we as women, we have, we have to try, we have the duty to try uh, for ourselves, for our uh, children, for other women, because we have to share, show them that we can be equal as men. And we can do many things. I uh, add publication, I start to, uh, to write articles, so um, it was relevant for my study. And then I started to uh, work in the French theater when I moved to London. It was really uh, successful for me to have a, a different, uh, as you say, a different uh, uh, opera. Uh, the Resto Rex was the first one. Then I worked with the famous uh, Estonian director. And as you, when I worked in this environment, it was really, really nice because they were all nice. We want to grow together. We want to make the project all together. We want the best for everyone. And we have all, uh, all uh, we had all the same uh, objective to have the, uh, to grow and to have a, a, an amazing show uh, for ourselves and the others. This is not happen unlikely in, um, in architecture. And then I worked for Opera at home and in the fringe, I realized set and costume sometimes. Uh, uh, so that so was the project you met actually with a singer because- uh, This one, it's Opera at home. Yes, we worked yeah. in this one, as you see- gonna explain moment. after yeah. you, then we will combine together this story. That's great. Yeah, first the music and then the words. We, I was set and costume design. And then in this one uh, with the, the director, by Mozart, uh, I made the set, she made the, the costume. Uh, so we worked together and I tried to move, uh, it, it was a fringe theater. So it's, you know, usually the fringe theater is not, um, there are no many fans, but uh, I tried to, uh, to move in the fringe, even the uh, idea to have a, a Group, mobile mo uh, groups, uh, an interaction between uh, the, the actor and the set. And this has done the second part of my life that uh, I work as a freelance uh, um, architect. Uh, I always uh, 
mm, try to uh, sketch by hand. I am an old style uh, architect. Uh, of course, then I have to switch to CAD uh, the, the design. But my first inspiration are uh, by hand. And I worked for many uh, construction company and organization in London. Uh, so I, uh, in different kind of architectural projects, like residential, I have the, this is the um, Felbridge uh, Hotel, and then uh, in some restaurants. Or do you come to London very often? Uh, I op I come to London very often. I miss the ER because of the Okay, if anyone uh, reach you from London to offer you freelance uh, work. Oh yes, time to time it happens. Because, sometimes, because now I'm working at the uni with my uh, research of a PhD. I finished, I got the PhD, but my research is going on because I had the contract with the uni. So my research is going on. But uh, sometimes they call me uh, from London. So I come back to London to, to work. Good. And I, yes, I hope to find more job in London because I like the environment, especially the theatrical one. And this is my PhD project. Maybe I, I'm taking too much time the festival architecture this was my mm, most important uh, achievement because i worked with young mckellen so it was a dream of mine and you can see him uh, by the back and yeah it was nice to be part of this project as well thank you and yeah. your um maybe you can type in chat box how they can connect you yeah, uh, yes. Your uh, social media account. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. I can stop you the share. Can, you okay. can stop sharing. Great, thank you very much. So, next great speaker, Esengu Sasi. Uh, she's a designer. So, uh, she suggests uh, me to invite Pina as well in that project. So, thank you very much, Esengu, one more time for your suggestion. So, uh, you can take the screen share. Hi, my name is Esengu, Esengu Sasi artist, uh, fashion, and costume designer. Uh, who is Esengu Sasi? <laughs> I was born in Turkey, and I studied fashion in college, and uh, design in university in Istanbul. Sorry. And, uh, oh my goodness. And uh, in Turkey, uh, I studied fashion in college and uh, University in Istanbul after working as a lead fashion, uh, lead designer in fashion industry, uh, five years. Uh, then I moved to London as a Turkish designer. Of course, um, to work in London was uh, not easy. And uh, I decided to study here more. And I studied fashion in St. Martin's University for one year. After I got uh, my first con contract with uh, Opera at Home, Musical and Theatre, which is, I, I met with Pina there as well. And uh, I also work on um, remote co um, corporate with uh, Istanbul Beşiktaş Cultural Centre. I design theatre costumes for children. And uh, Planet C was a project of Carrefour Company. I designed all costumes based on children's story for theater. In images uh, are from each fruits and vegetables designed by me and director was uh, Okan Yakshi. This is Beşiktaş uh, Cultural Center, um, uh, that one as well. Um, this is, I hope you can enjoy with this. I just want to show you. This is one of theatre project with Opera at home. This is my costume. <laughs> I hope you like it. This is Song of the Swans by Opera Atom. I design all of uh, cast costumes. Uh, these are the main characters. Uh, my project took a year and only these main characters costumes were, uh, was around uh, 
two weeks to design. I worked with Opera at Home for 10 projects, 10 different projects during the last eight years. And uh, this is another project by Beşiktaş Cultural Center in Istanbul. Uh, we were the four seasons. I designed all costumes based on four season concept as well. Uh, yeah, that one, uh, my design have also been the subject of arts. Um, last five gallery exhibition. This exhibition was Costumes of the Revolution. You can see here as well. That gallery was in Mayfair. And after lo long experience in different projects, I realized I am not good enough for the marketing for my works. And I decided to study business at different, um, David Game College to understand point of other side of works. I learned uh, many new subjects to fill up my uh, profession field. I got more confident to focus on my dream work, which was animation film. And I moved to digital side of um, educational career. I have been studying MA degree, digital media management in Barbeck University. Uh, I wrote a children's story and I have been still working on animation movie for my dissertation. It was my childhood dream. Uh, I'm really glad to make it happen. And I can not share, of course, yeah, this is my story, but I cannot share more images um, before submit my dissertation, but I will publish on social media when I finish my animation movie for my story. Um, and you can contact with me Instagram to find out more information. And this is the one of uh, story storyboard about my story. That's beautiful. Also, yeah, you, you. you made your own image. <laughs> it's like a lovely. Yeah. <laughs> you can thank just you. And if I, yeah. Sorry if I find that. Okay. I yeah. Took yeah, yeah. I see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. And know? next speaker, Lily Pulum. Uh, she's working in construction industry. Hi, Lily. Hi. Uh, you can feel free to take screen share and uh, tell sure. more about who is Lily. Thank you. I'll take you to my slide. Can you see me and my screen? Yes. And okay, you can perfect. hear it now. So I'm going to talk about being a woman in construction and of course I cannot speak on behalf of all the women in construction but I do strongly believe that my observations are going to be relatable to many that's within the industry. So construction industry is the most male dominant industry in the world. And then how does it feel to be a female in this male dominant industry? I'm going to return to this question after I talk about the figures a little more. So what we've got, and I've listed my source as well, is that the percentage of women in the industry, and as you can see, this is really, really low. And this is taken in 2019, and years ago, it was much lower. But this is actually the improved version of number of women that's in a very, very male industry. Um, is this this is quite a fun fact? Um, only 27% of the university graduates have a job related to their degree. So my job is not related to my degree. I didn't, um, when someone asked me when I was a child or what I was going to be when I was, uh, when I, you know, what I wanted to be when I grew up, uh, construction wasn't <laughs> across my mind. I would, I would want to be a fairy maybe. <laughs> Um, I have studied clinical nutrition and what I studied and what I do are completely unrelated. But also it's good to know that many people do make 
that error when you're young and trying to choose a career, it can be quite difficult to know which direction that you'd like to go. But I do recognise the importance of studying within uh, one's field in order to climb the career ladder. Therefore, currently I am also a student. I'm studying for a degree in applied health and safety in construction so that I can further my career. Um, I've only worked in construction just over five years now and experience and education are both equally important in the role that I'm doing. So uh, at over five years, I worked in the high-end residential buildings where all the rooms and ceilings and floors are covered in marble and silk. And I worked in affordable homes where two bedroom plus bedroom size of shoebox. I worked in high rise buildings. I'm currently working in a hospital. And, and my next project will be a magistrate's court. So some of these buildings have been new built and some of it have been refurbished and some are heritage and, and you know, some in public, some in private sector. And I love my job. I very much love my job. And I have many reasons to love my job. I mean, I work with professionals. I am treated with respect. I am given daily encouragement, regular training to improve my personal profile. I'm paid well. My work is flexible with the needs of my family and every hour is as diverse as every day. I know two projects are the same. Challenges we face on projects are also different and the people I work with in each project are different. So I move places, teams and projects in every couple of years. But recently it's been a bit more often because it's a couple of years if you take on a project from beginning to end. But what is my job? What is, <laughs> I'm, I'm a document controller. And, and I'd like to explain a little bit about what a document controller does. So this picture is a actual representation of me at work. So <laughs> that's, that's what I do. Um, one of the most important things I do is build a bridge of information within all departments of the project. Um, they do not communicate with each other. I communicate with everyone and analyze the project and report against what needs to be done and what has been done. And amongst many other administration duties, and again, one of my priorities is getting, uh, looking after all the detail. So, the, so a designer's time is spent designing and engineer's time is spent engineering. And I can look after all the other details of the project. And another thing is when you do build anything, you have to hand this project over. And five years later, when someone realized that, realizes down the line something went wrong, mm -hmm. again, it's my job to make sure the paperwork is in place. So when we walk away, we walk away for good. Most of the day, I'm staring at something like this. And I'm not too concerned about <laughs> which way the door swings to and because I'm not the designer and I'm not necessarily concerned what happens if you take this wall out. Would the second floor collapse on your hand? Probably, but it's the structural engineer's um, job. So I would only do the details when I'm asked to. Are there anything negative um, in my industry? Yes, absolutely. I look like this when I work. And I don't like it very much. It's cold, it's dusty, it's very dusty, it's dirty, and it's not my employer's job to provide female changing rooms or showers or toilets at work. So we're often not I have that luxury. And it's not glamorous. You know, you go to work wearing the clothes that you don't mind sacrificing, and you put your hard hat on, so forget about hairstyle there. We often don't put makeup on because we don't want man at work to look at us and think that we're pretty. We just want to get the job done. We don't want to be pretty. We want to be an employee. And so if somebody says like, oh, would you like to go for a drink after work? Uh, my answer is no, no, I don't want to go for a drink after work I it on a Saturday. <laughs> and so this takes me back to the question, so how does it feel to be a female? 
in a metal dominant industry. It feels like this. It doesn't feel any different. I mean, we're all a team and we're getting a job done. And yes, if I have my hands full, someone will open the door for me. The common courtesy is there. But I don't necessarily think that I'm being treated any differently. And in, in today's world, that could possibly be taken as a positive. So I recently had a chat, actually, with a friend. And as um, with, with the coronavirus and lockdown, some people have lost their jobs and, and, and decided to pursue their dreams, which is great. So I thought, you know, if the world wasn't what it is, you know, if you didn't have responsibilities. So I painted a nice little picture there. No bills, no mortgage, no passports, no visas. Just let's remove the languages as well, if everybody spoke one language. And we could just hop on a plane, go anywhere. It's always sunny. You know, you, you, you get what I'm talking about. But yes, uh, would I still be a document controller? Probably not. I probably wouldn't be a document controller. Then I would then want to have a Dobby Baker. Because that would actually make me much happier. Even though I am happy, I could definitely be happier. And this would make me very happy. <laughs> and that's all for me. So this is your second passion job? To uh, this, this, is, this is my dream job. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Lily. You can stop screen share. And you can type in chat box how they communicate and connect with you. Sure. Um, next speaker, uh, Fidel Jululu. She is um, going to present uh, as sport lady. Uh, she can tell us more uh, how she started the career and so on. Thank you for being part of it, Fidel. So I cannot see you, but yeah, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, let me start to share the screen first. I'm going there just a second. <laughs> okay, I think it's done. You guys can see the screen. You can right? see and hear now. Okay, that's great. Perfect. Um, on the slide show yes all right good evening all my name is fidel i'm uh, proud to be part of tonight's webinar uh currently i'm working at harbour club notting hill looking after swimming tennis and as well as any junior activities we run i'm from turkey uh antalya living in london last 13 years prior to arriving in uk i studied leather technology uh, as a degree and worked in various industries, including fashion, sales and marketing when I was in Turkey. Coming to London was a life-changing decision. I literally started over at the age of 26, including uh, speaking because I wasn't able to say as a word uh, in English. I can't say it was easy, but I wanted to stay and try. I became as an au pair and worked in bars and restaurants at night, not only survive to pay the rent, but to put some aside for English tuition as well. And you can always start over, that's what I did, because I totally changed my life. Um, I was trying to learn how to live in a different country, and I said to myself, let's get started. During this period, I attended university, again, my second university in London, studied business administration. Again, the start in the second university, almost coming 30s, was a bit challenging as well. Uh, but it led me to meet with specific people, which I'm grateful because, you know, she introduced me to the sport field. That, um, so I was looking for a part-time job while I was studying, and an opportunity occurred to work in a health club as a swimming pool lifeguard. That's where my professional journey started. So I progressed, and then after training, I graduated with relevant certificates uh, and became a swimming instructor. 
that's all were happening when I was studying in university as well. So it was a bit challenging, but it was great. It was a nice journey. Uh, my sports life was a zero. Never in a million years, I would imagine that to be in the sport industry and improve myself in that field. But being in the water and seeing progression and improvement and most importantly, giving like life-saving skills to the people as much as I was enjoying the environment motivated me. And this motivation brought more success because I kept continuing to improve myself. And then every step I took brought more challenge. Uh, but I didn't give up. I continued to progress and I became a swimming club swimming manager after two and a half years later, which uh, brought more challenges because including managing a team of 10 swimming instructors, which they were my friend as well. That was a bit hard too, because, you know, we were working together for the last two years and everything. Um, but after that, you know, with the, all the challenges and everything, it makes you progress more. So I progressed a few more management position in same club and including, um, and I became the studio coordinator and then the tennis program manager. And now is a sport manager, kind of like AKA family activity manager. So 10 years ago, I started as a lifeguard and now I'm the sport manager, which is like, you know, is, is a, proud moment for me. Uh, currently at my job, I'm looking after the swimming department, tennis department, and as well as energy and activities is happening in the club. Um, there were hard times. For example, my previous role as a tennis manager, which was the last one before I become the sport manager, was hard uh, due to surrounding all male tennis coaches and, and all the adult tennis players, which was the hard people to deal with them. I've been judged by not knowing how to play tennis, which I'm not a tennis coach. <laughs> I've been judged being a woman because everybody was asking how I was going to deal with these tough tennis coaches. Um, but I managed it. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of that part. Yes. Is it real? Like, you know, we are all living in London and I mean, um, people judging you because you are the woman. Um, oh, no, no, you know what? It is, it is true. Even in my interview, for example, with my general manager, that's the question that, you know, he asked me. He said that, how are you going to manage those tennis coaches because they are tough? That was the question that, you know, that he asked me. So it doesn't matter because especially in the sport industry, the people, the sport people, the hour is really high. <laughs> I mean, it's, of course, it's not a bad thing. Of course, it's, it's a good thing. But when it's become to managing those people, it's challenging because, you know, they are strong-minded. They don't like changes and they always think that they are right. <laughs> and that, and especially with the men, it's get you know, it's harder. With the females, you know, especially it's, it's, um, how can I explain this? When you're like a female to female, of course, you know, things would be easier. But when it becomes a female to male section, and especially if you are the manager of them, it's get a little bit harder. That's what everybody was, you know, everybody's concern. Um, but I did well, because after a year later, they promoted me. <laughs> well, you need to go to and doing good empathy in psychological way as well to communicate them with people I think um, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. You, I mean you have to be strong much. as well but mm -hmm. it's it's fun it's challenging but it was fun I mean because it you know at the end it's a fun environment so that's what I like it and I said you know I'm gonna try and I'm not gonna give up which I'm grateful that I didn't <laughs> Okay, thanks. And because, you know, in the, as I said, in the sport industry, it's like a, you work with the physically and mentally strong people. And also they are competitive minded people and they don't accept that if they are wrong, um, they can judge you with your, even your, your physical ability. Like, as I said, they judge me that because I wasn't able to play tennis. And then even the members, they judge me that how come you can manage a tennis department without knowing how to play tennis. But unfortunately, the people that who are like you know, just doing sport, 
they don't understand the difference is the managing and in the playing. So it's totally a different thing. Um, however, of course, there were some great advantages uh, communicating with you know, the other um, strong, hot headed woman and man, which is in the club, you know, and I, you know, I'm lucky to be working in a healthy environment. And, you know, you're always active, which is a great thing. And I don't have to dress up all the time. I'm always with trainers, <laughs> which is a positive thing, which I love it. Um, so that's, that was supposed to come now, actually, because when I was talking, answering the question, I forgot. These are, for me, the, like, you know, the positive and negative things. That's what I like. And currently, I am really enjoying my position. And... And a positive benefits presented to me uh, day to day basis, even though the hours are very long and sometimes non sociable hours and weekends i don't I don't foresee myself looking for a new career, so I'm grateful that you know my career is something that is my passion and i and I enjoy it so it's it is it is great and I, I enjoy it so that was my journey. That was all of what I can say about the sport. And thank you all. <laughs> thank all. you so much, Fidel. It was great. If you guys have any uh, questions, just don't be shy. <laughs> that's something I don't do. I, I never do sport in my life. So <laughs> I don't have this motivation at all. So I was curious how you can stand up to do it uh, every daily life, you know? <laughs> no, you, you should. You should have. It's, it's, it's healthy. <laughs> Yes, but I don't I have like any motivation. <laughs> you can teach me. <laughs> okay. Um, so the next speaker, uh, she's from Turkey. She joined and it is time, two hours um, ahead. Then it's, sorry, it's late for you, but uh, yeah, thank you for your patience <laughs> then. And Nishan Kalkan, she is a finance um, consultant. Um, as, as I can say, I'm an economist, so uh, she's a great, I know her <laughs> career journey and she's a great, so I am exciting to hear from her that what uh, she have achieved. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Arzu. <laughs> um, hi, everyone. Uh, firstly, I try to share the screen, uh, if I may. Yes, I did, I guess. Yeah. Um, uh, today, I would like to uh, talk about um, women in finance, uh, according to my perception. Uh, but firstly, I would like to start with the uh, with my background and um, briefly my uh, CV. Uh, I am uh, 43 years old, um, and I have 22 years finance experience in Turkish best uh, companies. I can say. Um, um, I would like to start with the uh, education. Uh, I came to Istanbul uh, and I'm still living in Istanbul um, to study university um, at Marma University Economics Department. Uh, and before my graduation, I started to work for Ram Trading Company, which is uh, one of the coach group company in Turkey. And it, these are quite, uh, I mean, exciting company. Uh, and I learned many things in there. Yeah, it was like a school for me too. Uh, and then uh, four and a half years later, I transferred to Archelik. It is a white uh, home appliance company in Turkey. And uh, it is also one of group company and I transferred there. Uh, and I worked there for two and a half years. Uh, and then I uh, changed the job um, and I came to uh, Garanti Emeklilik. Uh, it was um, a pension, private pension company in Turkey, but bank insurance company. And it is the, one of the biggest company uh, in that area. Uh, during that time, I studied about, uh, executive MBA in Bahçeşehir University. Um, after 10 years, uh, it was hard, but I changed again the job uh, and um, went to Groupama. Uh, it is a French company in Turkey and it has three companies more. And I was the uh, head of budgeting, reporting and accounting team uh, of these three companies. Uh, finally, <laughs> I uh, quit the job. Uh, 
very soon. So now I established my own company. Uh, it is Arcarius uh, Consultancy, uh, and I'm. Uh, I mean, it in March 2020, so it is quite uh, new, and it's like a baby for me. Um, uh, firstly, um, I would like to say um, something about Turkey. Um, I studied finance uh, and I hold master degree in finance too. Uh, and I am working on that area and still I would like to work for a long time too. Uh, I have to say that if you would like to have a better job as a woman in Turkey, um, you have to be graduated from university. Um, but it is not enough, uh, I mean, for our uh, career journey. Uh, to clarify that, I will give some figures to you. Uh, Turkish population, Turkey's population is around 82 million, uh, but we have 11 million academy and university graduates here. And um, among this, um, 1 million uh, people have a master degree. So it, I mean, knowing that uh, you cannot say just only a university graduation is important and enough uh, to make a career here. So that's why I um, uh, attended many courses and many internship programs in Turkey to improve my skill, skills and um, uh, my knowledge. Uh, I believe that uh, if you make, if you want to make a change uh, or difference uh, as a woman, you have to study um, and invest in yourself uh, and improve your skills uh, is must in Turkey. I don't know other countries um, much, but uh, in Turkey it works like that. Can I say something just here? Yeah. <laughs> I study economy in Turkey, in Istanbul, and I did master degree in international economy. Uh, without knowing any English or little yeah. English, let's yeah. say. And I moved to London when I was 31. So I start from the beginning, like Fidel did. So uh, it was a big life challenge for me. And uh, I realized that actually the degree is nothing here. So uh, yeah, I, I heard that in the UK it works uh, like yeah, that. It's somewhere Turkey, different. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. true. But but uh, same for me. I mean, uh, before my graduation, I didn't know any English, uh, and I uh, decided I I saw that um, in finance area, if you know English, it will be really big advantage for me uh, to take some steps. Uh, and then I went to Boğaziçi University, which is the, the I mean the most well known and uh, best university in Turkey. Uh, so and, uh, I studied uh, two years English courses there uh, and even summer, it was really intensive courses. So uh, I can say, I mean, this is a never ending story. So investing in yourself is not finishing. Uh, um, I know, so I now, now I can say about uh, my motivations and it, it also includes this um, curiosity adding value uh, and beyond uh, going beyond my limits are uh, i think my motivation and uh, i would like to talk about a little bit more uh, and i know my time is going but i will make it short uh, in the first class of university um, the professor said economics is the science and um, is efficiently managing the uh, limited resources I always have a problem with limits and limited resources. Uh, I didn't understand that. And I said to myself, I came here just to change the world. Uh, you know, as uh, Turkey, uh, economic crisis are our daily uh, news and we don't care about that that much. But to fix it is a really big issue for us. That's why I thought that I become uh, one of uh, the the successful team in Turkey. And what, then we are talking about limited resources. So I just didn't understand and get confused. And during the exam, um, I noticed that um, the trick is in the efficiently managing part. And it was um, really the moment uh, for me. And I asked myself how I can contribute um, to this 
um, solution part. And I'm uh, really curious about that. Uh, that's why I attend many internship programs uh, in companies and decide uh, to work for a big companies, and I did. Uh, because I believe that the contribution and the participation is important um, to give a voice. Um, and these are my motivations then. I mean, and this, this is really important for me and I am still um, trying to go beyond my limits. Um, now I would like to talk about advantages in finance, but of course in Turkey I am talking about. Um, firstly, I can say that um, um, interviews and uh, assessments are uh, quite fair in uh, finance in Turkey. Um, overall gender distribution are uh, balanced, so we don't have in, uh, any problem. Um, on the job, uh, there are many advantages, if you like. Um, we are seeing, as finance people, we are seeing the big picture. Um, not only the company, uh, but also country and overall um, global economy. Uh, in the company, we are sitting on the strategy setter side, uh, which, is, which motivates me also. And uh, we are supporting and um, developing the uh, company's results. And uh, we are supporting all the teams uh, to achieve their goals. Uh, of course, there are many uh, uh, challenges, but I will just count a few of these just related to uh, this webinar. Um, I have a problem uh, with sea level, that's why I will mention firstly uh, that part. Um, as I said, 50% uh, uh, is uh, the uh, finance sector uh, employees of uh, female part, about 15% uh, up to 20% uh, is just uh, sea level representation we can see. So um, numbers are important. I mean, the entrance uh, and surviving is important there, but also the challenging part is getting uh, power uh, here. And of course, uh, I have problem with cultural beliefs, but I can I don't see any difference from country to country. As Fida said, uh, it is same in UK. Um, many people tell us, uh, look like a lady, um, act, um, look like a girl, act like a lady, think like a man, uh, and work like a boss. So this is a, a kind of uh, challenge for me uh, because being yourself uh, in this business area is uh, the challenge, I think. Just one contribution here. Okay. Um, I think depends on the sector because the finance and technology is very um, man-dominated sectors. Uh, that's why um, I, I don't believe just in Turkey. So everywhere around the world, it's like sea level board levels are men in uh, finance and um, technology industry. That's why they are supporting like kind of the e EBDR, uh, this kind of company. They are supporting women uh, in finance and technology. So they are um, supporting companies if they hire C-level and board level uh, women more than men in their country, they get extra benefit. So yeah. I see lots of company, they proud uh, announce that, okay, now our CEO is a woman. Uh, in that field, blah, blah, but actually they get money for this. So it is, you know, uh, the complicated situation, but it's better than 10 years or 20 years ago, let's say. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can say I managed really successful uh, and um, very profitable uh, projects. And uh, I saw that um, if you like competition, um, you don't choose uh, if the people uh, to compete with are man or woman. That's why I uh, believe in uh, collaboration and cooperative work. Um, so I believe that uh, a collaboration is part of our nature, uh, which helps us being uh, more successful than other creatures. So I believe that we can change the game. Uh, and uh, take the collaborative way uh, in workplace. 
the question, <laughs> this is, uh, yeah, I am very happy and very satisfied being in finance. Um, but shortly, I would say, and I think she says the best, uh, Christine Lagarde um, says, when women do better, uh, economies do better. So I totally agree with that. <laughs> Um, I would like to say a few last words to women who would like to have a career in finance. Um, I can say that uh, age is not in, um, important, I mean, but the most important thing is uh, education and experience, uh, but not only university education, I can say. And um, in finance, jobs are quite structured. Uh, target-oriented, uh, time-oriented, uh, and very well-defined, I can say. If you are well-organized, um, analytic, hard-working, um, and focused, uh, you are more than welcome uh, to enter this area. Um, but I have to remind that, uh, as finance people, we are a support team. So uh, in the company, normally you shouldn't see us on the stage. Uh, and if you see us on the stage, it means that there is a problem in that area. Um, and I would like to um, thank you, uh, Arzu first and all uh, for my listening to my presentation. And it was a, a quite, quite nice uh, evening for me. So thank you uh, all. Thank you, Nisha, it was great. So I would like to introduce our doctor, Gezo, like this, <laughs> to make a awareness to use in a mask these days because, you know, the COVID situation increased. So maybe you can tell more how people need to be very responsible about using the mask, but this is the medical mask, not the medical uh, mask, uh, fashion mask. <laughs> it, it, is it right? Yeah, it's increasing in reality. Yeah. So. Yeah, we we um, we can see uh, many masks in this day. Yeah, it's new fashion. Uh, thank you, Gezo, to join in our webinar. So I'm curious to hear from you as well. Yes. So you recently based in London, but you are Turkish doctor. Yes. Welcome. Thank you. Um, uh, if you want, let me share my. Can. Oh, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Gezo Issi Boskurt. <coughs> uh, I would say uh, thank you uh, to Arzu for creating this meeting and inviting me. Um, thank you, Arzu. Um, You're welcome, Gezo. <laughs> who am I? Um, I am a pediatrician qualified to work in Turkey. Um, I was worked as a doctor in Turkey uh, for eight years and I have been living in London uh, for about a year. Uh, I am currently working as a maternity coach in UK. Uh, I have set up a company called Baby Health where I consult with mothers about how to create and maintain a health baby and child development process. This includes not only child development, but also uh, caring for your baby. For example, breastfeeding, weaning, you know, after six months, and toilet training, terrible tooth syndrome, uh, or baby growing. Um, I'm working especially under six years old, uh, depending upon the child's needs. And this picture, uh, I think uh, three years old, uh, I'm in front of uh, ambulance, uh, an ambulance. Um, uh, it was um, in my hospital. Uh, I was told, I want to talk uh, about this picture. Uh, because uh, they are, they can show to us uh, for about my job. Uh, it uh, you can see, I was pregnant. Uh, I was still working, uh, and uh, it was from 2015. Uh, and in this time, uh, in Turkey and some country, uh, there was swine flu. Um, it was very dangerous, especially pregnant women. Uh, 
uh, unfortunately I had to work uh, in child lung uh, infection clinic. Uh, it was very dangerous for me, uh, but if you are a doctor, uh, dangerous and your job uh, the same mean sometimes. Uh, and uh, again, this picture, uh, after uh, a night in hospital without sleeping a night, uh, it was, uh, I think, 5 a.m. Uh, and uh, my team and I carried a premature baby uh, to another hospital. Uh, and you can see uh, I was proud of uh, uh, our job. Uh, I was smiling. And this uh, photo, this is my son. Um, he was almost 10 months. Uh, and uh, I was in hospital all day, uh, maybe uh, nonstop 30 hours. Uh, it's so long time uh, without, uh, without uh, separate a mother and a son, uh, baby. And still, uh, I was giving uh, to him my breast, uh, my breast milk. Uh, and my uh, husband uh, came with him uh, for feeding uh, and for kissing. Uh, I can't, uh, I can't forget this time. Um, I want to say uh, my month uh, uh, for my job and. Uh, I want to say I'm uh, very excited if I say wrong things, sorry. <laughs> uh, because uh, I like speaking uh, and explaining, uh, but uh, firstly, um, lead, firstly uh, I can say something's wrong, but after that, everything will be okay. Uh, I want to say my mind uh, about my job. Um, whether I am working as a maternity coach or pediatrician, uh, I like really my job uh, because I like to help people to achieve uh, a health life. Uh, it's uh, amazing job uh, and full of emotions. I'm very in interested in health and well-being and re uh, reaching out to mothers or women in general. And. Uh, I want to talk about, again, this picture. Uh, and this picture on the right um, with my son again, uh, because uh, I, uh, in uh, our hospital's garden, uh, I miss a lot. And on the left, you can see uh, my arm bone got injured uh, after uh, working. Uh, you know, uh, a person hard work. Uh, if it's stop, uh, we we have to emergency uh, message and pump uh, oxygen. It's it's called a CPR. And uh, after one of CPR, uh, it uh, my bone get injured because it was very hard and so long time. Uh, and you can see uh, I was uh, still working in hospital. I want to say two things uh, for about uh, women in health life as a woman. Uh, I think to help uh, people or animal uh, is instinctive for especially women or uh, our soul is so close to help anything. Uh, so I mean that women shouldn't stay uh, to work um, to work help life. And I want to say the other thing, um, I feel compelled to tell women to recognize and use uh, their own uh, instinctive abilities of being a mother. It's a special time um, for me. I can uh, help you not only as a professional, but also as a woman. Um, I want to say uh, women, uh, women's, uh, uh, in my opinion, to under, uh, sorry, I 
while I was working in health life, uh, I can see uh, the link uh, between uh, women rights and health life. I can see the link. And uh, I want to explain uh, you. Uh, in my opinion, uh, to understand mothers is most important thing, uh, thing for my job. So when uh, an inexperienced mother confers with me, I can relate uh, to her not only uh, a mother, but also understanding uh, that she, she could feel as a little sensitive girl. Inexperienced mother can feel inadequate about herself. And um, many times I can see uh, that and uh, many times uh, I explain to, to, to the mothers, uh, you are a wonderful woman, uh, you have enough breastfeeding uh, and, and etc. But after then again, the same uh, situation. Uh, and many times I thought, why? Why uh, women or mothers have low self-confidence? I can't understand, I couldn't understand. Uh, and then uh, I understood why. Uh, when we were younger, uh, we were told uh, you are a girl and you, can, you cannot do it. Meaning we can not do some things, for example, run fast, for example, to be an engineer, some jobs, to be a doctor and to be a good mother, it means. And the reason for our lack of uh, confidence self, uh, and self-belief belief is hidden and uh, suppressed since our childhood times. And out of the blue, these negative emotions can suddenly appear when we were adults and might affect all our life. Uh, I think women's uh, movements like this organization is significant for all of us. So uh, we can say and we can see, uh, we can do it, do what you want. And if it needs uh, uh, another example, give another example uh, for my life. Uh, I want to tell you about my medicine faculty and uh, in this, uh, this picture you can see. Um, I, I want to talk about uh, previously this picture, uh, this skeleton, we called it uh, Osman. Uh, it's very funny name because Os, uh, it means in Latin, uh, bone. And uh, man, you know, in English, and Osman in Turkish name, real. And uh, our medicine faculty, uh, in Turkey, uh, in my class, we were probably uh, 100, more than 100 students, but unfortunately, they, there were uh, only 10 female students. Uh, you know, uh, you can see that's less than uh, 10%. Uh, there were not a lot because women gave up medicine faculty of uh, the long and difficult education to become a doctor. And some of us were told uh, that you sh we should be married uh, to be a doctor. It's not appropriate for a woman. You should choose easy way. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, we lost some, uh, some of our sisters in medicine life. We didn't met them anytime. Uh, they gave up their dream to be a doctor. So, uh, in some countries, they are still very few female health workers. Um, I want to say a uh, first person who wanted to be a health worker. Uh, I'm a doctor and everybody knows that medicine and uh, working as a doctor are very difficult where you live in the world. But um, I decided and I can do it, make you sure that I'm not a very smart person and a very talented person. And simply I wanted, uh, really wanted and believe myself, believe in myself. I didn't let anyone put me off. I dreamed, studied a lot. Uh, and after then finally I can do it. But uh, I moved to London and 
uh, our uh, education, unfortunately, uh, 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 London uh, in London is not a work. Uh, I'm working again my uh, job uh, to be a doctor. Uh, and after, if you want to be a doctor, I want to tell you, no, it's an amazing job. Believe in yourself. You can do it. Uh, let's don't let anyone put you off. Yeah, thank you for your patience. Thank you, Gezo. And you can stop screen share. Of course. Yeah, thank you. It was great. So we need more female doctors. That was a strong message. <laughs> and uh, we can tell they don't give up. So please carry on. You can do it. Yeah, it was your message, I understand. Um, so because of the COVID, we lost lots of doctors in UK because it was not a great um, government decision. Yeah. They were so late and, you know, the hospital couldn't manage on the same uh, time. And unfortunately, lots of grateful doctor has been lost because of the COVID. Uh, so next uh, speaker, Phyllis Demirji. Uh, we had another webinar with her. You can see on Sectoral Events YouTube uh, channel that she explained very well how Zoom works uh, for users. We are in the Zoom webinar platform now, but also people uh, mostly use Zoom uh, for meetings. So she explained great in Turkish. If anyone interested, they can watch it again. Hi, Phyllis. Thanks for being part of it. And uh, thank you, Arza. I will leave the screen for you. Thank you. Thank you. And let's go back to the beginning of 19th. And there was no mobile phone and internet wasn't widely used and no Instagram, no other social media platforms. But uh, there was television and it was really popular and Hollywood movies were dominated all over the world more than today. And I, I was a kid uh, to love watching the television like all the other kids in those days. <laughs> and especially I love watching movie and uh, I saw the computers first time in those movies while uh, even kids age between 10 or 15, uh, sitting in front of the computer and typing uh, on the keyboard and uh, were trying to hacking FBI or Pentagon systems. So when my teacher or my friends asked me, what will you be when you grow up? My answer was ready. A computer science engineer. <laughs> I was just 10 or 11 uh, and I wasn't aware of what kind of difficulties waiting for me and even engineering was considered a male profession. When I started university, I was one of the three girls in my class. And in the second half of the 90s, the ratio of female engineers was only 10 percentage in computer science and also generally in engineering. You might think there, uh, that there would be gender equality in, in, uh, by 2020, but unfortunately, no. Uh, women in the world of today, computer science is still mostly, uh, mostly under male domain. And uh, a whopping 8% of those in the field are male, while only 20% are female. Even in companies such as Google, Facebook, Apple, this rate of female professional is just 23%. Women's relationship with technology has been evident since the beginning of computing and problem solving. Isn't that surprising, bearing in mind that the first coder in the 19th century was a woman? Uh, Ada Lovelace, uh, I'm sure you heard about it. Uh, she is an English mathematician. 
and she wrote the world's first machine algorithm for an early competing machine. So, what holds women back from the technology, science, engineering, or mathematics? First of all, first of all, we can say that it starts from uh, it, it starts the difference in approach from the childhood, unfortunately. Although it differs uh, according to countries in societies all around the world, while men are considering logical, free from emotions, good in mathematics, uh, seeing women as emotional and unlogical and fragile has been built since childhood. In addition, researchers show the most common reasons for, the, for this issue as follows. Lack of mentors. I remember that when I was graduated from university, I feel like a fish out of water. There was no one to guide me or uh, no one to mentoring me. My teachers at school were good academicians, but they were not related to the real sector, unfortunately. And the industry was new. I didn't know whether it was better for me to work in systems or networks or in software area. And I did not have enough information to make decisions. In the early years of my career, instead of making conscious choices, I was just blowing with the wind. And I missed out uh, on big opportunity, like the free training offer from SAP. And this cost me a lot of time or missed the chance to specialize in a field that would shine brighter and work in much higher salaries and better conditions. And the second, gender bias and derogatory behavior in the workplace. And many women, we had different experiences on this subject and many examples can be given. And all these great women mentioned that kind of things a little bit. Just close the story. And in my experience, I saw this discrimination and humiliation a lot when I was working in other sectors, but not in technology companies where there are mostly engineers. I have to say that. And men look down to me and they always wondering whether I am capable of doing the work and they thought uh, a woman uh, won't capable of understand the technology. Uh, I still remember that look. Uh, but personally, I responded to all these negative thoughts with the quality of the work and exceptional of the result I produced. And the third one, the, the lower salary for the same position. Uh, based on many searches, that women in the same position receive lower salaries than men. That would be women's lack of self-esteem and not being able to negotiate their salaries. In the beginning of my career, I didn't have enough self-confidence to. Uh, in my first job, I started to work as an uh, as a system administrator in internal IT. And after two or three years later, I was not very happy anymore, but I couldn't find the courage to change my job. And in the same company, I got promoted because even I didn't realize myself, they realized me and my job description had been changed. I started to work with the company's clients directly for their IT projects. And I analyzed the needs of the clients also to design and implement the infrastructure for them. Then I realized that the outside of the world is not what I thought. IT managers at other companies, and of course all are men, <laughs> are not more knowledgeable or uh, not better at their jobs than me. I was awarded of how well I had trained myself and made my, my work much better with my female perspective. 
this has allowed me to be much more self-confident and I've changed my job with a better position and salary in my next role. And uh, all those factors also cause of the high quit rates among women in STM jobs. Many times I thought quitting my work too. It wasn't easy in long working hours, working in a challenging job, both physically and mentally, and not being rewarding for your effort and not being appreciated. All of these can bring everyone to the point of quitting. And there were times when I felt very tired and fed up. But then I felt that as a woman, maybe this, is, this one is our weakness, but uh, we can use it as a strongest part. I have an emotional approach to the situation. And I realized that I actually wanted to leave the environment I was in because of the dirty office policy, not my possession. So every time uh, when I felt stuck, I changed my company and even my sector. Uh, this is the one biggest advantages of working in IT, uh, is that you can actually work in any industry. Every time when I change my company, I change my industry too. This gave me a chance to learn different disciplines, different business line, and uh, expand my experience. And the most pleasant part of my profession are contributing to execution of the main business area of the company in the different sectors and uh, solving the problems of the people in all departments and implementing infrastructures that will facilitate their work, developing new systems, producing different outputs as a result of different projects and so on. Even if you deal with technology, you are touching people and work you do is for the human benefit. And I love, I love technologies, a vital facilitation. And my current mission is to raise awareness of people and companies against potentially harmful aspect of technology and inspire them to use technology in a secure way. My other favorite thing in my profession, you have to learn constantly and to follow innovation and not to be behind the technology. Even though it's not easy to keep up to date, but it's vitalizing. As a conclusion, this world created by men, but men or women not happy about the end result. We have tons of problems in the world, but Pragmatically, we can solve our problem ourselves all together without discriminating against men or women. We can make the world a better place to live. Perhaps we cannot replace them with a magic stick, but we, as women, we can change the world as we produce being strong women who can stand on their own feet, make contributions to society, and raise future generations with awareness. Like all these great women uh, who talk this, talk this evening. And everything will start with a small tiny step we will take. So let's take action today. Help a girl anywhere in the world to go to school or inspire a young woman you know around and guide her way. Raise your boys and girls without using a certain sexist attitude. You can do it, we can do it. Come on, not tomorrow, today, take that step. And thank you. You can reach me from this detail as well. Please. Um, I will send uh, your details to attendees in 
thank you email with the vouchers that sponsor also included for uh, tonight event. Yeah, I stopped. <laughs> uh, I can also uh, tell a bit more about our services that uh, actually I would like to give something um, to attend this and the speakers if anyone need a consultancy for the startup or business. I'm just trying to take the screen. Uh, we are not doing only workshop webinars, uh, seminars, and mostly doing online these days. Uh, we also work uh, with the, our event partners, collaborating advertising. So this is the VBB Gantic, as I say, they give the 5% uh, discount uh, if anyone would like to have treatment uh, to look them younger. So they use their own uh, uh, cell um, using the stem cell uh, treatment. So you can have more information to contact them. I will send this voucher. Sorry. <laughs> uh, also, on clinic, uh, they offer a board uh, 195 pounds uh, free consultation if anyone book uh, any dentistry treatment with them, which is great discount. And uh, also um, our yeah rhinoplasty sponsor. Uh, if anyone need um, anything to change on the face, if you are not confident with your face, that uh, it's a great solution they give. Also, they give five percent discount on the operation booked. Um, Turkey is a great destination actually to go and uh, have a treatment with reasonable prices. So uh, what I would like to offer, if you go to sectoral, um, sorry, if you go to sectoral events uh, website, <clears throat> you can see um, we have some workshops. And there's a common design workshop. If you have your own business and you are struggling to design the uh, advertising for social media, I will help. It, it, it's a 10 pound uh, workshop, uh, approximately two hours. And this is the business strategy one-to-one -one session. So this is the one hour, 20 minutes. So this price uh, will be 50 pounds off for one week. If anyone um, book online, you can be able to book online. There are also other workshops going on. So I would like to offer you uh, today, if uh, anyone wish to join one of the workshops, this is the 50 pound off voucher, and this is the 20% off Canva voucher. It will be sent to you by email. Just, I would like to add this information and uh, come back to you. Uh, thank you to attendees to come in uh, tonight to our webinar platform to uh, hear from us. So hopefully another um, United Business Women Network uh, webinar will be around March. So hopefully we can see each other again. And during the meantime, we can communicate on Instagram and Facebook. Um, if you go and uh, follow the UBWN pages. Um, so my company, Sectoral Events, um, support this uh, webinar today um, as an awareness uh, about a woman um, in professional life and uh, hopefully some people already inspired um, what they would like to achieve in the life and their goal and maybe they change their uh, profession area and hopefully we uh, could be able to help them and so if you would like to add anything and any any question to each other? <laughs> I don't have any question, but I'm I'm happy to meet everyone. <laughs> <It was> <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
I promise if anyone yeah. uh, come to London, so uh, let me know. Or Istanbul. I, uh, yeah, I will uh, offer your drink and to have a lovely chat and we can maybe let us uh, other people, if anyone would like to join. So thank you so much, ladies. Thank you. Uh, thank it was you. a lovely evening. It was a pleasure. It was a lovely yeah. evening. Thank you so much. And ho I hope the attendees um, enjoyed. Yeah, I see there are no questions. Probably you cover all the <laughs> question was on their mind. Yeah, uh, I got lots of tips tonight. Thanks. Uh, per personally, I inspired a lot. So thank you so much. Um, so hope to see you again. Oh, Stay safe and bye. 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 Bye.